Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the SmackDown Review. SmackDown was taped from the CHI Health Center in Omaha, Nebraska. They shot tonight's uh, SmackDown uh, that aired uh, last week before last week's show went live because uh, WWE are overseas. You know, in Japan, they were doing uh, live house shows uh, there in Japan. So they ended up uh, shooting SmackDown. Uh, that aired tonight, last week. But this was a very mid-Smackdown tonight. Nothing happened on the show tonight. Nothing newsworthy came out of the show. But we saw Ellie Knight, yeah, versus Santos Escobar. We had a number one contenders tag team championship gauntlet match where the winners will get to face uh, DIY, Johnny Organo, and Tommaso Ciampa for the uh, tag team titles. Yes, yeah, so the Garlic match took up, you know, pretty much half of the show. So we saw that. And then we had the main event. Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton versus Bailey and Mia Yim. That was SmackDown tonight. Overall, this was a very mid-show. Man, I just feel like SmackDown every week, there's nothing, you know, coming out of it. And, you know, I can't wait for Roman Reigns to come back. When Roman Reigns comes back, then he's going to bring life back to SmackDown. Because SmackDown, without Roman Reigns, it's just very mid, in my opinion. But before I get into the review, if you guys haven't checked out my previous video that I uploaded earlier today, my Deadpool and Wolverine uh, review is out, so check out that. You know, really enjoyed the film, loved it. It's my favorite Marvel film of the year. So just check out my review of that if you guys haven't seen it. But this is going to be a uh, short review here because, of course, nothing special. Nothing great happened on the show tonight, and nothing newsworthy, like I said. But let's jump right into it. SmackDown opened up with Nick Aldis and the Bloodline. We had uh, Tonga Leoa, Jacob Fatu, uh, Tama Tonga, and Sol Sokoa. So, Tonga, Le Tonga Leoa had an eye patch on him. Nick Aldis ended up telling them that Tonga Leoa is not clear to compete in the Tag Team Championship Gauntlet match. And that they will have to, the Bloodline will have to forfeit their spot in the Gauntlet match. So Sosakoa ended up telling Nick Aldis that the Bloodline is not forfeiting anything. Sokoa ended up saying that the Bloodline will be represented by Tama Tonga and Jacob Fatu. And Sokoa was like, oh, if that was okay with you, Nick Aldis. And Nick Aldis ended up approving it. He ended up saying that it is okay. So Sokoa ended up telling Jacob Fatu to bring the titles back home. So pretty much that was basically that. So Tama Tonga and Jacob Fatu uh, competed in the Tag Team Championship Gauntlet match later on in the night. And then we had the first match of the night. L.A. Knight, yeah, versus Santos Escobar. Santos Escobar was accompanied by Electra Lopez, and this was a decent match here. And we had L.A. Knight start off, you know, backstage, and then he ended up going through gorilla position all the way out to the, uh, the stage. So the match got on the way. Knight ended up delivering a hip toss to Escobar, which was followed by an arm drag to Escobar. Escobar got to his feet, and Ellie Knight ended up delivering an arm bar to Escobar. Knight ended up throwing Escobar into the ropes, ended up hitting him with an elbow to his face. Knight ended up getting Escobar in the corner. Knight climbed to the second rope. He ended up pinning Escobar with some right hands, but Escobar tripped Knight up in the corner. 
Escobar didn't deliver a chop to Nice Chest in the corner. Escobar then delivered a snap suplex to Knight. He up again Knight into a modified sharpshooter, but Knight got to the ropes. Escobar then distracted the ref, and Electra Lopez got involved. Electra Lopez ended up hitting Knight with a right hand, and that led to Escobar delivering the 619 to Knight. And then SmackDown with the commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Knight was in control of the match. He delivered a power slam to Escobar. Electra Lopez got on the ring apron and distracted the ref. Long Paul, the United States champion, ran down and he got on the ring apron. Logan Paul ended up going for a right hand to Knight, but Knight ended up ducking and he had pinned Logan Paul with a clothesline, knocking Logan Paul off the apron. Knight then turned around and Escobar delivered a kick to Knight's face. So Escobar ended up going for the Phantom Driver, but Knight landed on his feet and that gave Knight the chance to hit the BFT, the Blunt Force Trauma, on Escobar. He went for the cover and there you go. LA Knight ended up winning the match. Post-match, Logan Paul got into the ring, and he up attacking Knight. Logan Paul ended up stomping on Knight, and he grabbed him, but Knight ended up pushing Paul into the corner, and he started stomping away on Logan Paul. Escobar then delivered a flying knee to Knight to his face, and Escobar then helped Logan Paul up. So both Logan Paul and Escobar double teamed on Knight, to which Knight was still down. Logan Paul got on the top rope, and he hit Ellie Knight with a frog splash, and pretty much that was basically that. But overall, like I said, decent match between uh, Knight and Escobar here. And, you know, this is, you know, setting up, you know, Logan Paul versus Ellie Knight for the United States Championship at SummerSlam, which is going to be next Saturday. So then we saw Byron Saxton. Byron Saxton was with Naomi. Naomi ended up telling Byron Saxton that she doesn't know what Blair Davenport's problem is with her. So then came Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill. Both Belair and Cargill end up hyping Naomi up, end up telling Naomi that they have to go take care of some business. So pretty much that was basically that. And as SmackDown came back from the commercial, Logan Paul was backstage. And Byron Saxton ended up stopping Logan Paul. Logan Paul ended up telling Byron that he spoke to Mr. Cleveland. And there was a surprise homecoming for him at SummerSlam. Logan Paul then ended up telling LA Knight that at SummerSlam, he is going to wrestle the pride of Cleveland. Meaning he's going to win the match there. Possibility. So that was what Logan Paul had to say. I mean, it's time to take the United States Championship off of Logan Paul. Please. The towel needs to come off of him. So then, Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair came out. Jay Cargill ended up coming out first, and then Bianca Belair, you know, came out after. So... They were both in the ring. Bianca ended up getting on the mic. Bianca ended up saying that she will cut to the chase. She ended up saying Alba Fire and Isla Dawn have been ghosting her and Jay Cargill. And they end up asking where the women's tag team champions are at. So Jay Cargill then ended up telling both Alba Fire and Isla Dawn to stop ducking them. So Alba Fire and Isla Dawn's music end up hitting. Both Alba Fire and Isla Dawn end up attacking both Bianca and Jay Cargill from behind. Bianca end up throwing Isla Dawn to the outside. Jay then picked up Alba Fire and Jay gorilla pressed Alba Fire and she threw Alba Fire over the top rope onto Isla Dawn. And that pretty much was basically that. So, Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair, they want their Women's Tag Team Championships back. But 
overall, this was very meh, in my opinion. And as SmackDown came back from the commercial, Tiffany Stratton was backstage. Tiffany Stratton's uh, Money in the Bank briefcase was all taped up because, you know, what happened with, you know, Bailey. So in came Nia Jax. Nia Jax ended up telling Tiffany Stratton that she will get her a new briefcase. Will that new briefcase look pinkish? I would think so. Hopefully. It's a custom Money in the Bank briefcase for Tiffany Stratton. So Tiffany ended up saying that she wants to get revenge on Bailey later on tonight. And pretty much that was basically that. And now we had the number one contenders tag team gauntlet match. Winners will be the number one contenders to face Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, DIY, for the tag team titles. So we had Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews versus Angel and Berto. And the match got on the way. Angel ended up going for a splash on Corbin, but Corbin ended up moving out of the way, and he delivered a clothesline to Angel. And I'm like, when did Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews suddenly become a tag team. Did I miss out on that? There was no explanation as to why they are a tag team. And Apollo Crews is just there to put over, you know, some talent. So Corbin ended up grabbing Angel, but Angel did a little right hand, and Berto, Humberto was tagged in. So Angel and Berto end up double teaming Corbin on the outside, and Humberto delivers suicide dive onto Corbin, and then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, Apollo and Angel were then tagged in. Apollo delivered a kick to the side of Angel's head. Apollo then delivered uh, three German suplexes to uh, Angel. Apollo then climbed up to the top rope. He ended up jumping off the top. But Angel delivered a knee to Apollo's face. Angel then delivered a backbreaker to Apollo. He ended up going for the cover. Corbin broke up the pin. Humberto then clotheslined Corbin to the outside. But Corbin dragged Humberto to the outside. So Corbin ended up throwing Humberto into the ring steps. Corbin then tagged himself in. And he had pinned Angel at the end of days. He ended up going for the cover. And Angel and Humberto or as they would call him, Berto, now, were eliminated. So Paul Cruz and Baron Corbin then fought the Street Profits. So Baron Corbin and Paul Cruz got eliminated because uh, we had Apollo Cruz and Angel Dawkins end up getting into the ring. Dawkins delivered a right hand to Apollo. Ford was then tagged in, and Montez Ford ended up hitting uh, Apollo with the revelation Ford ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews were eliminated. And with that came pretty deadly, pretty awful, pretty shitty. You know, Kit Wilson and Elton Prince. And pretty awful end up getting eliminated. We had Dawkins end up hitting a right hand to uh, Kit Wilson. And Montez Ford ended up tagging in. And the Street Profits ended up hitting Kit Wilson with a blockbuster. Montez Ford went for the cover. And that was how pretty awful, pretty deadly got eliminated. And then out came the OC. You know, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Carl Anderson and Montez Ford, you know, they ended up coming into the ring. And we had Anderson deliver a snapmare takedown, which was followed by a chin lock. Ford got to his feet. And he ended up pinned Carl Anderson with some elbows. But Anderson ended up delivering an elbow to Montez Ford's face. And the OC got eliminated by Dawkins. Ended up landing on his feet. He ended up rolling Gallows up. And he ended up getting the pin. Eliminating both uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. And then that brought out the final participants. Jacob Fatu and Tama Tonga. And Jacob Fatu... We all know 
He's a beast in the ring. He is just absolutely uh, great. Tamatanga is good as well. So we had the Bloodline. You know, Jacob Fatu and Tamatanga end up winning the match where Jacob Fatu end up hitting Montez Ford with a super kick. And then he laid out uh, Montez Ford with a small and drop. Jacob Fatu climbed to the top rope, and he landed a nice moonsault onto Montez Ford. He ended up going for the cover, and there you go. Jacob Fatu and Tama Tonga end up winning the match, and they are the number one contenders to face Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa for the tag team titles. But overall, this was, you know, a fun little uh, gauntlet match, but... Nothing, you know, great or perfect by any means coming out of it. I mean, the bloodline winning was the most obvious of decisions because, all right, they come out last. Obviously, they're going to beat the Street Profits, and, you know, that was what happened. And as SmackDown came back from the commercial, we had Grayson Waller and Austin Theory end up coming out. Both Grayson Waller and Austin Theory end up talking about how they would have won last week had it not been for Terrence Crawford. Austin Theory ended up calling out Terrence Crawford and telling him that he will come out and apologize to the greatest tag team in the world. So out came Terrence Crawford. Of course, you know, Terrence Crawford, you know, boxer, you know, don't really follow uh, boxing that much. So, Terrence Crawford came to the ring. Waller ended up saying that Terrence Crawford disrespected them last week. And it's only fair for Terrence Crawford to apologize to the both of them. Crawford then ended up shaking his head. Waller ended up telling Crawford that he might be the best boxer in the world. But this is their ring. Waller then ended up telling Crawford that if he takes one more step towards him, Austin Theory will knock him out. Theory then took a step towards uh, Crawford, and Crawford knocked Theory out. Knocked him just straight down. So Waller then left the ring, and that drew a big reaction from the crowd, and Crawford ended up celebrating the ring, and pretty much that was basically that. Overall, very mid. And then we had a video package of Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes now talked about how he won the Royal Rumble this year. And it was the fans who got him back his main event spot at WrestleMania. He didn't mention how he finished the story. And the bloodline were no more. Or he thought. Cody ended up saying that the doppelganger version of them with nothing to lose is on SmackDown. And because of that, his friends his allies, and his partners were destroyed, trying to fight by his side. Cody Epps saying that he's going into SummerSlam as the champion, and he has to bring all of his fire and passion. Cody Epps saying that he can't let it slip into the hands of the bloodline. He Epps saying that Solskoa is dangerous, and has proven that he will do whatever it takes to get what he wants. He ended up saying that he has to look into Solskoa's eyes to see what kind of a man he really is. So Cody ended up challenging Solo to meet him in the ring next week, face-to-face, one-on-one, to see if he is ready. Because Cody ended up saying that he knows Solskoa is. So pretty much that was basically that. And then as SmackDown came back from the commercial, Byron Saxton was with Andrade. So Andrade ended up telling Byron that he was thinking about the United States Championship. And in came Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo Hayes ended up telling Andrade that it's not over until he wins. Carmelo ended up telling Andrade that LeBron James even has a night off every now and then. And it happens to the best of them. So Andrade was like to Carmelo Hayes, you are not like LeBron. You're more of like a LeBron Jr. So Andrade ended up telling Carmelo that if he wants one more match, he will get it. So Andrade ended up reaching out 
his hand for uh, Carmelo Hayes to shake it, but Carmelo ended up walking away, and that was basically that. So it looks like we're going to get another match between Andrade and Carmelo Hayes. Main event, Tiffany Stratton and Nia Jax versus Bailey and Mia Yim. And this was just a very meh match here. So Mia Yim ended up making her way out first. And as Mia Yim was walking down to the ring, we saw Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton. They both ended up attacking Mia Yim from behind. Bailey then came out. Bailey had a kendo stick in hand, but Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton ended up running away. Bailey then checked up on Mia Yim. So Tiffany Stratton and Bailey got into the ring. The match got on the way. Bailey right away delivered some right hands on Tiffany Stratton, and she had thrown Stratton into the ropes. But Stratton ended up coming back with a show tackle to Bailey. Stratton then posed in the ring. But Bailey ended up kicking Stratton down from behind. Bailey then delivered a sliding clothesline to Stratton. Bailey then went for the cover, but Stratton ended up kicking out. Bailey then grabbed Stratton, and Stratton ended up pushing Bailey into the corner. And Stratton delivered an elbow to Bailey's face, and Bailey ended up falling towards the ring apron. Bailey then knocked Nia Jax down, and she ended up delivering a kick to Stratton. Bailey ended up going back to the ring, and she rolled Stratton up. Stratton then kicked out. So Mia Yim was back on the ring apron here. Nia Jax ended up dragging Mia Yim down, and Nia Jax then delivered the Samoan drop to Mia Yim on the floor, and then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, we saw Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton. They were double teaming on Bailey in the ring. Nia Jax ended up going for the cover, and Bailey ended up kicking out. Nia then ended up grabbing Bailey and pushed her into the corner, and Bailey then ended up falling to the canvas. So Nia Jax ended up tagging in uh, Tiffany, and we saw Tiffany Stratton end up hitting Bailey with a splash into the corner. Stratton ended up locking a chin lock on Bailey. She ended up throwing Bailey into the ropes, hitting Bailey with a spine buster. Stratton then ended up going for the cover, but Bailey kicked out. Nia Jax was tagged back in, and she ended up slamming Bailey onto the canvas. Nia then delivered an elbow drop to Bailey. Stratton was then tagged back in. She ended up going for a stand elbow onto Bailey, but Bailey ended up catching Stratton, and she ended up landing a modified German suplex to Stratton. Mia Yim ended up getting onto the ring apron. Nia Jax ended up tagging in. Jax ended up going for a spear towards Bailey, but Bailey moved out of the way, and Nia ended up spearing into the ring post. So Strider was then tagged in, as did Mia Yim. So Strider and Mia Yim ended up going at it. Mia Yim ended up slamming Strider face first onto the canvas. Mia Yim then delivered a tornado DT. She ended up going for the cover, and Strider ended up kicking out. Stratton then delivered a suicide dive onto Nia Jax on the outside. Mia Yim ended up climbing the second rope. She ended up going for a cross body, but Stratton moved out of the way. Nia Jax was tagged in. She ended up going for a splash onto Mia Yim, so Mia ended up moving out of the way. Bailey was then tagged in. Bailey ended up delivering a knee to Nia Jax's face. Bailey then climbed the top rope, and she landed the elbow drop on Nia Jax. She ended up going for the cover. Stratton ended up breaking up the pin. Bailey and Mia Yim ended up throwing Stratton to the outside. So Mia Yim was in the ring. The ref ended up telling Mia Yim to get out because she was not the uh, legal uh, woman in the match here. So that allowed Stratton to hit Bailey with the Money in the Bank briefcase. And Nia Jax then ended up hitting Bailey with the Annihilator. Nia Jax ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Stratton and Nia Jax ended up winning the match. Overall, very mid-match this was. And then we saw Sol Sokoa. Sol Sokoa ended up telling Cody Rhodes that he will see him in the ring next week. And that the Bloodline will win 
the Tag Team Championship. And Sokoa ended up saying that he will win the title at SummerSlam. He ended up saying that if Roman Reigns has a problem with that, he knows where to find him. And that was how SmackDown went off the air. So again, Sol Sokoa and Cody Rhodes next week on SmackDown. But overall, SmackDown tonight, very mid-show it was. If you did not watch the show tonight and you read up on the results because of the show being taped, you missed absolutely nothing. So, really, uh, you know, short review this was. I mean, felt like a tape show. And uh, another news already came out of the show tonight. But also for SmackDown next week, uh, we're going to have uh, Logan Paul's homecoming celebration. Uh, we're going to have Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill versus Alpafari and Isla Dawn for the Women's Tag Team titles. And of course, next week, DIY versus Tama Tonga and Jacob Fatu for the Tag Team titles. So that's all set for SmackDown next week. And it's the go-home show for SummerSlam. But anyway, that's it for the SmackDown review. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Be sure to check out my previous video, my Deadpool or Wolverine review if you guys haven't seen it. And until next video, I'll see you all later.